like it. So the calf on the, the far right there is a Tyleria negative calf and the two brothers to the left are, are Tyleria positive calves and they're all uh, of roughly the same age. These two calves standing next to each other here, uh, one calf is uh, not infected with Tyleria and this smaller calf um, is Tyleria positive. So this calf is infected with the pathogenic strain of uh, Tyleria orientalis and you can see the growth rate difference between them. This calf um, is much shorter, skinnier, potted belly um, compared to the animal that's next to him that's um, of the same age. So that's one indication that uh, you may have problems with Tyleria in your calves is a difference in their um, growth rate. But um, also signs of anemia will indicate um, Tyleria. So that can be cows that are particularly dull and depressed uh, that might have very pale um, membranes, so very white around their eyes or pale gums. Um, those cows that are the slowest to walk up to a dairy, for example, or huffing and puffing. Um, or in beef cattle in particular, you may see the first signs that you might see is that they're separated from the rest of the herd um, and become a downer cow. And um, with, uh, it, it can be related, particularly around um, the time of calving, so when their body's under the most stress, but it can also occur at other times of the year if they've been exposed to the parasite. There's no treatment registered in Australia for Tyleria, so the main thing is a supportive treatment. So you don't want to uh, stress the, the, the animal by moving them, so you preferably leave them where they are if it's sheltered and, um, and bring food to them, water to them, um, and a lot of them will get over it with good nursing care. Uh, sometimes we need some antibiotics or some anti-inflammatories uh, to treat a downer cow syndrome. So when they become downer, then they start getting sick from other things. So we can treat the, uh, the secondary conditions, being infections or um, inflammation of their muscles with anti-inflammatories, but only time and the cow's immune system will actually eliminate the uh, parasite. Uh, it's, uh, the study's ongoing as to the, what the prevalence is. Uh, we know that um, roughly about a third of the uh, cattle population will become uh, positive for Tyleria. However, um, only very few, one or two animals per herd usually, show overt clinical signs of Tyleria. So they may actually have it, they may have a drop in milk production for example, or growth rate, but that may, may not be detected. Um, and only very few animals will become uh, downer or become particularly ill and, and die of the, the parasite. Uh, sickness from any reasons or if the body's under stress from um, you know, lactation, particularly in early lactation where there's a huge demand on um, energy for the cow um, or around calving time, that will um, increase the stress of the cow transporting cattle will also put extra strain on the body, um, lower the immune system and potentially allow the parasite to take hold. There are weather conditions, um, particularly warm, humid or wet um, environments will uh, potentially allow increased activity of the vector and at the moment we think that's ticks but it may be um, other vectors as well that um, if those vectors are increasing in numbers then the likelihood of transmission will increase and uh, cows that haven't previously been exposed to the parasite may become exposed and um, become uh, victims of the disease.